This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, to be at a Mokom like this, it's obvious you're not just going to get there. It's going to be a walk because to be Zoycha, to be at the Kever of Rabbi Avram, then Rabbi David, Mi Pashkiyaira of Pokiers, one of the all time great Rishonim. In fact, the Iri says, of all the Mefarshe Hashas, he was the greatest. So you say we don't even know him as one of the Mefarshe Hashas. But the Me'iri writes, the greatest Mefarshe Hashas was the Ravid. We only have his commentary on a few Mesechdois, but it's been preserved in the Shita Mikubetseth. Now, in two places, the Ravid writes, I'm telling you this, Kach Nigleli Misoid Hashem Lireyav. So he said he had some kind of divine revelation. He says this in Hilchos Lulav, Parak Ches, and Hilchos Beis HaBechir, Parak Vav. So says the Chida, what does it mean, Nikola Li Misoy Hashem Li Reyav? The Rikanti writes in Parashas Nosoy that the Ravid had Gilu Yeliyahu. So we're talking about a Rishon that communicated with Elio Anavi himself. <clears throat> There's a commentary on Sefer HaYetzira. Rav Chaim Vital says this is not from the Ravid. Now he's called the Ravid Bal Hasagos. Everybody wants to know, what does it mean, Baal Hasagos? The word Hasagos here means the author of the critiques on the Rambam. Hasagos are critiques. Now, he wrote Hasagos on the riff, and he apologized that he had to write Hasagos on the riff. He just felt that we could not rely on the riff in all circumstances. Then he wrote Hasagos on the Rambam. The Ravid himself says he has the greatest respect for the Rambam. And what the Rambam did was Melacha Gedoyla. However, he did not want people to feel they could just rely on the Rambam carte blanche. So therefore, he felt he had to write Hasagos on the Rambam. Furthermore, he did not feel that the term Mishnah Torah, that you have Chumash, and you have the Rambam, and the Rambam is secondary to the Torah. He didn't feel that that was correct, and therefore he felt compelled to write Hasagos on the Rambam. The Ravi was born in 1120. He was a student of Rabbeinu Meshulam and a student of Rabbi Moshe Hadarshan. He's the son-in-law of Ravid II, the Ravid of Bezdin. He was a very wealthy man like Rabbi Tam, and he single-handedly supported the entire yeshiva at his own expense. And despite his great wealth, he eschewed all physical pleasure as a way of combating the Yitzhahara. So he was an ascetic saint, a uh, um, tzaddik. Now in 1172, Al-Ziar, who was the lord of Pokier, he was very jealous of the Ravid, and he uh, accused the Ravid, and the Ravid was imprisoned, um, and he was slandered against. However, Count Roger II of Carcassonne arranged the release of the Ravid, and then the uh, lord of Pokier himself was imprisoned. The Ravid began writing at a very young age, and he also, besides writing Hasagas on the Rambam, I'm going to tell you one of the most well-known Hasagas the Ravid ever wrote on the Rambam. The Rambam has a kasha in Hilchas Tshuva, Parag Vav, The Rambam asks, why did God punish the Egyptians? God decreed, So the Egyptians had a responsibility to carry out the divine will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So why were the Egyptians punished? Says the Rambam, because it was not decreed on any particular Mitzri that they have to carry out that decree. So therefore, any Egyptian who stood up to fulfill the decree was doing an Avera. That's the Rambam. Ask the Ravid, just the opposite. If it was not decreed on any Egyptian that they have to enslave us, then call hakoidem zoiche v'arei zorez v'niskar, that any Egyptian who enslaved us should be rewarded. By the way, this argument of the Ravid was invoked in the Eichmann trial that the Nazis should be rewarded for what they did because they were carrying out a divine decree. But that's how the Ravid views it. That once God decreed it, then anyone who fulfills it is fulfilling the, the divine will. And the Ravid says, well, they went overboard. They did more. They were just, uh, it was just decreed that they should enslave the Jewish people. It was not decreed that they should torture us. Okay, so now a few things the Ravid wrote. Tamim Deim. Are you familiar with that word? The Tamim Deim of the Ravid. The Ravid also wrote something called Batei Hanefesh. The laws of Tarsam Mishpacha. The Mechaber relies on the Ravid, on the Ravid and the Batei Hanafesh very often. <clears throat> now, the Ravid received Kabbalistic instruction from who? Ravid II, from his father-in-law, from Elio Anovi. And we're going to move on um, in a moment 
to the Ravid's son. The Ravid had a son who was also extraordinary. And this son, we're going to see, was considered the father of Kabbalah. But it's a really a great success to be at the Kever of Ram Ben Rav David Mipash Gaira. Now, the Ravid II wrote the Sefer HaEshkol. You probably have heard the Sefer HaEshkol. That's Ravid II. Ravid III wrote the Hasagos, Chidushaman Shas. And the Ravid III also wrote something which is uh, a matter of controversy. And that is the commentary on the Taras Kayanim. You look at the Taras Kayanim, you have the Pirsha Ravid. The Chavaz Yoyer says, this is not Ravid III. And the Chida says, with all due respect to the Chavaz Yoyer, he's not correct about this, but the Ravid wrote the preeminent commentary on the Taras Kayanim. The Pirsha Ravid is the Ravid Baal HaSagai. So uh, we're going to say a Kapitel Tilm over here, and then we're going to speak about the Ravid son. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.